Hello, thanks for tuning in to another one of my Reacts videos. This has been a popular topic lately, and I'd love to know, do you think humans will be the future of art? Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I have been a professional photographer for 12 years, and I've seen technology change a lot since I first got started. I think my first digital camera was like a three or four megapixel camera. The photos were tiny, not the best quality. It had a touch screen though, so that was pretty cool. Obviously we've come a long way since then. You know, Photoshop was still like sort of new, very limited in functionality compared to what we have today. And we also didn't have the ease of access back then that we do now, where anyone can go out and get a top of the line camera and the best editing software and access to stock photos and all kinds of things to create imagery. And so this has been a hot topic lately is how do you classify what is human made art versus what is AI? There are AI generators out there like Midjourney is probably the most popular one right now where you can just type in a phrase um, and you and it will generate really cool digital art for you. And people are producing books and selling these images. They're putting them up in galleries, which I think is cool. But it's raising the question, did the person really create the image? Do they have the right to sell it? Should we even be buying this kind of stuff? And obviously that's up to everyone individually to decide if they want to purchase any piece of art, right? And no one can tell somebody else what art they can and cannot connect with. But in the case of, of AI generated art, we are blurring the lines of what is actually created by a person versus what is, you know, just an algorithm producing something. And some people might not care at all, but in the artist community, we're wondering who actually owns this art, who gets credit for these sorts of things. And if that person didn't actually create it, can they copyright it? Because in photography, whoever pushes the button on the camera legally owns the copyright, unless you have a contract stating otherwise. There have even been cases in the past where a nature photographer is out and a monkey comes over, and this is a pretty famous case, uh, a chimpanzee comes over to the photographer and is pushing the button on the camera, taking selfies essentially. It has no idea what it's doing, uh, I assume, but it's basically just pushing the button, looking at the camera, taking selfies. The photographer then sold those images as you know monkey selfies, but people came out and said, the photographer didn't take those images and the monkey did. So who owns the photos? Who can actually sell them? Now, the AI generator software might have some sort of clause in it where if you are the one who types in the phrases to generate the art, therefore you can sell the art. But I, I don't believe we have legislation for something like that yet. And I, and I think it's gonna be a bunch of tricky conversations in the next several years to figure this stuff out. But the real issue we're seeing in the photography community, aside from ownership and who can sell the art, is at what point is it no longer photography? And you know, as a, a certified PPA judge, that's Professional Photographers of America, we had to have this conversation in getting our certifications as to what qualifies as photography when somebody enters it into an image competition. You know, because we have Photoshop, you can add elements into an image, you can take stock photos and cut a sailboat out of one image and put it in the background of the photo that you took. Now it's not technically un strictly the photo that you took, it is a composited image and can that compete in competitions with other uncomposited photos? And some people say yes and some people say no. So I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Is this going to be the next iteration of what qualifies as photography? And all the conversations that I'm seeing that I've been a part of are all that it, it falls somewhere on a spectrum, but there's no tipping point that is defined to say whether it's still considered photography versus AI generated art or composite work, something like that. We don't really have a name for that sort of thing yet. So let me show you some examples of how these images are being used in the photography world and why there's this controversy. So if you just go into Google and type mid journey AI, you can join the discord group. I mean, you look up AI generated art, you're gonna find a ton of stuff. I love it because it's all kind of creepy and dark and that is totally my style. Uh, but aside from that, 
you know, you look through some of these images and you're like, okay, well, they're obviously not photographs. So why would this even be a conversation? Well, it's because somebody's creating images like look at this and then they're Photoshopping a person into the image as if maybe there's somebody up on the balcony or walking up to the front door of this home. Is it still considered a photograph? There is a photographic element to it, but it's not entirely a photograph. In fact, a small percentage of the square footage of the piece of art is actually a photograph versus AI generated. That's one use case. You know, same thing here. This, I think, is a stunning image. But you can totally add somebody in one of these styles of dresses to the image. And now my client can have a poster or a, a large print on their wall of this image that they're in, which is really cool. But is it still considered photography or are we just digital artists now? And maybe, again, the definition doesn't matter to you. But in the photography community, this is kind of a hot topic right now. So let me show you some other ways that I've seen people using these things. Oh, I'm sure this is gonna be an interesting one. You just have this shape, which looks a lot like the Nike swoosh. Is that going to be copyright infringement if an AI generated shadow or warped figure resembles something that was copyrighted? I don't know. I'm sure we will find out in the next few years as this goes through the court system. Okay, so let's go flowers. This is one that I've seen a lot lately. And I I didn't want to pull up other artists' work because I don't want to call anyone out specifically, but I want to explain how these things have been used. So let's take this photo, for example. One thing that I've been seeing a lot of is photographers taking elements out of the photo. So you can cut out all of these flowers in Photoshop, have them on their own transparent layer, and instead of having this AI generated person in here, you drop your own client's face or their own portrait. And then you're basically using the flowers like you would stock photography. We buy pictures of flowers like this and we would Photoshop them into, into a portrait. Now we're just doing them with AI. And they've got a different texture to them than a photographed flower. So you could add different textures to the image to then make everything blend together. Like, you would essentially recreate this image, but with your own client's face. And, and if you pay attention, they're lit up here, it's dark over here, same thing with the client's face. The light is up to the left. So you can absolutely create images where the light makes sense, there's the depth of field, everything looks like it's supposed to. I think that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, same thing over here. Uh, you could take all of these flowers and you could add your own client's face into that. Here's another one. You could take this, cut this out, remove the, the, I guess, the base of this tree, and now this is a gorgeous headpiece that you can just Photoshop over your client's head, and it's almost like, like a crown or something that they could be wearing. And then, you know, you would change the texture of the original image to match this so that it has that, that sort of grainy, painterly feel to it um, to make everything actually blend together. But then again, at that point, are you just using the AI as stock photography, cutting things out, adding elements, or are you taking a small photographic element and adding it to an otherwise entirely computer generated scene? Another example with the flowers here. And I've seen so many other ones that aren't even just flowers. Like this could be fish swimming around for an underwater scene, something like that. How to use Mid Journey to create floral textures. Yeah, absolutely. You can see here, Right? Creating flowers, creating these backgrounds, and then you're layering them into the photos where you have a, a photo of the child who's a fairy. I think it's amazing. Oh, and Nikki Harrison is phenomenal. If you're not familiar with her work, absolutely go check her out. She's an incredible photographer. She's on the list of people I would love to photograph me. And I've spoken to her about doing one of my own portraits. I just gotta make it out to, to her part of the part of the world over there. So yeah, her stuff is incredible like this. Uh, and her work is already, it already belongs in a museum. So these things, again, it's just taking stock flowers from a regular photo and making them look painterly or using AI imagery to create something that's beautifully layered. And it's not as simple as just cutting things out and pasting them. There's a tremendous amount of work that goes into layering them so that they all look like they belong in the same image. But again, could she enter this into a photographic print competition? 
I don't know. Uh, as a judge, I would want to find out from the, you know, whoever's the head of the competition, the commissioner, I guess, going into the event. And we might just start seeing new categories as opposed to photojournalism, street photography, portraits, animals, flora, fauna, AI work or composite work might just become its own new category recognized in the photographic community. And again, different groups have different definitions. I've judged print competitions where portrait means one thing in one place and something different somewhere else. There was one organization I judged for, they had essentially street photos. Like the people out on the street, they were merchants in a marketplace, people purchasing things, had no idea their photos were being taken. I consider that photojournalism or street photography, but they were classified as portraits because it you know, framed the person around the, you know, as you would a portrait. But to me, a portrait has different intention. The person in the image knows they're having their portrait taken. Otherwise, it's street photography. So we're just going to be deciding definitions for a while, I believe. Yeah, here's another good example of just taking these images and adding them into a photo. I think that's, that's stunning. And of course, we're seeing everything in flowers. Okay, so then we have this dress, right? You could absolutely layer this over your client's real clothes. Same thing here, absolutely stunning, right? You have the dress, there's already this, this pose. Ah, oh, this one's made out of like moth wings. Absolutely incredible, right? So you could, you could totally take these outfits and just add your client to them or your subject, whoever is in the photo. And you've created this entirely new piece of art that you couldn't otherwise do without having to make this dress. So I think there's a lot of magic that could be had here and I'm really excited to see where it goes. But again, I wanna know, do you still consider this photography or is this more of an illustration? How do you define it? Let me know down in the comments below. If you have other things that you would like to see me react to, uh, shoot me an email, mike at boudoirguild.com. I'll put the link down below. I would love to hear your suggestions. I've got some other great React videos here on this channel, one about Harry Styles fashion, one about the Tiffany's Jewelry Company, one about Metallica, and they are all related to photography as an industry, as a business, and as an art. So I'm excited to see uh, what you think of those videos as well. And again, any suggestions, any ideas, let me know. I'm happy to check them out. You are amazing. We'll see you inside.